In the realm of PC tech, while high-end GPUs like the RTX 4090 garner much attention, they aren't the GPUs that most people are buying. In fact, the heart of the PC gaming community lies within the entry-level, mainstream, and mid-range segments. Last year, I felt this segment was overlooked, lacking new GPU options that offered the impressive value for money we've seen in previous generations. But could this change with the rumored AMD GPU on the horizon? Could this be the savior of the mainstream segment, offering gamers a compelling option? Let's discuss discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel. Happy New Year and I hope you had a great holiday season. So I wanted to talk to you guys about a new graphics card which may be on the horizon from AMD. We know Nvidia has some GPUs coming in the near future, but when it comes to AMD and the Radeon division, there hasn't been much going on. When AMD had launched the RX 7800 XT and 7700 XT, Scott Herkelman at the time said that the launch had completed AMD's RDNA 3 portfolio. But when it comes to roadmaps and product stacks, these can all Always be subject to change. What Scott said at the time wasn't because he was lying or anything like that, it's just that at that time they had no further plans, and what I also think he meant was that he could have been referring to the actual GPUs themselves, so like a Navi 34 or something larger than a Navi 31, it's just not going to happen. There's still room for them to make adjustments to current GPUs that are out right now to fill in some gaps in the lineup. Before we jump into the rumors and discuss the possible upcoming GPU, I wanted to bring your attention over to the good old Steam hardware survey. Using the data from the latest survey, which would be December 2023, I wanted to highlight the stats they have for the primary monitor resolution. Going through the list, you'll notice that 1920 by 1080 so Full HD, is the most dominant resolution at 59.58%. It's not even close. Now one thing to keep in mind is that these stats are also probably taking into account laptops which are inflating this number, and also game cafes in places like China. Though, even without those figures taken into account, I can still see this resolution being primarily dominant. Next up is 1440p at 16.39%. I can see this resolution gradually rising up and eventually being neck and neck with 1080p. Over the holidays, I saw plenty of great deals on 1440p gaming monitors, sporting high resolutions too. However, for now, 1080p is still quite ahead. Then we have 1366 by 768 which is a popular laptop resolution. Basically, it's 720p, but TVs more often used 1280 by 720 whereas monitors had used the former. Then at 4th place, we have 4K holding just 3.77% of the user base that submitted results, and you would think at 4K this number would be a lot higher. Given how many 4K monitors are available in the market, how there's many affordable 4K TVs now, and with how much attention high-end GPUs get like the 4090, 7900 XTX, and 4080, etc. But it's evident that the adoption for these high-end products is quite low, which makes sense. You can find 4K monitors today which aren't exorbitantly priced, but it's because you need such a high-end GPU to drive them to their fullest potential which detracts buyers. If we're to go on a popular retail site like Amazon and take a look at their best sellers in monitors, you'll find that many of the gaming monitors shown here have a native resolution of 1080p. That is a very intriguing result, but it's also not surprising given what we just saw from the Steam hardware survey. Another popular retailer that has a best sellers page in various categories is Newegg, and I thought I'd just check here as well to sort of cross-reference, and what you'll notice is that there are a lot more 1440p monitors. However, the reason for this is because Newegg is categorizing them separately as gaming monitors, whereas Amazon has a general monitors category, and I think they're just a lot more flooded with 1080p options, whereas Newegg it just deals with more of the larger brands, so you have 1440p being dominant here. Let's go back to the Steam hardware survey and take a look at the most popular GPUs. You'll find that out of the top 10, 8 of them are cards which targeted the entry level, mainstream, and low mid-range segments, so they're GPUs that the average PC gamer can afford. You know, within that $100 to $400 bracket. They don't cost an arm and a leg, and this was the point I wanted to drive home. Most people are still gaming at 1080p, with some at 1440p and a small minority gaming at 4K. What happened last year in the GPU market was quite unfortunate. Because because the cards that were introduced and targeted the mainstream market were severely underwhelming. I've made separate videos covering them, so feel free to check them out if you want a more in-depth discussion with what made them so terrible, but long story short, essentially the cards released didn't offer anything substantial over what you got from the previous generation, performance barely improved, and it really just seemed like a DLC graphics card which gave you access to current gen features like frame generation or other software gimmicks. At least that was the case on Nvidia's side. However, with AMD and more specifically their 
RX 7600. This was a GPU that also had the same issues as cards like the 4060 and 4060 Ti, barely offering an improvement over last gen while costing the same if not even more. At that segment, if you were in the market, the card I was recommending to anyone was the RX 6700 non-XT with 10 gigabytes. It was around the same price, but gave you more VRAM, had a wider memory bus, and also outperformed the 7600 on average. It was just a no-brainer. At its original MSRP of $280, it was DOA in my books. As things stand right now, the situation here hasn't really improved. It's actually gotten worse because those better value RDNA 2 cards are now almost depleted when it comes to stock. You can find the RX 6600 still brand new for around $200 or less, but that's a whole tier lower. So your only option if you want brand new is to go for these overpriced 7600s. And if you've been following my channel for a while now, you'll know that I've been urging people that if you want a solid bang for the buck GPU, your only option is to go used, which I also understand is easier said than done. Sure, there are some risks involved, and not everyone's local used market will be comparable to what we have here in North America. But if you're willing to put in the time to hunt for some deals, you'll probably come out way ahead rather than going the new route. Heck, in a previous video, I recently pointed out Newegg was selling refurbished 3070s for $300. I mean, if you're already paying $280 for a 7600, might as well pay the extra $20 and get that instead, which would be much faster. Needless to say, the mainstream GPU market is in a dire need of a solid option, something to shake up the stagnant landscape that we've been left with. So that brings us to the recent rumors surrounding an upcoming GPU from AMD called the RX 7600 XT. The 7600 XT was spotted from an EEC filing by a brand called Arctech who are an AIB in China, and usually when it comes to EEC leaks, I tend to take them with a grain of salt because companies are always filing names here even for products that will never see the light of day. However, back in September, there was an EEC filing done by PowerColor for an RX 7600 XT, and they actually had memory configurations in the name implying two different models, one with 10GB of VRAM and another one with 12GB. Contrary to this, we also had a filing from Gigabyte recently, and their submissions would imply that there's going to be an 8GB and 16GB model. Video cards also sourced Benchlife, who added that AMD will be releasing an RX 7600 XT later this month during the week of January 22nd. This could mean that during CES, AMD might be making an announcement for this GPU. The 7600 XT leak is interesting, because if you look at the current specs of the 7600 that we have currently available on the market, that GPU is already using the full Navi 33 die. It's not cut down like the 6600 was, so they can't make a bigger or faster GPU aside from them doing a heavily binned overclocked version with a higher TDP and faster memory. The most likely scenario will be that they are going to be cutting Navi 32 further, and it's the most logical route. When we take a look at the specs of the 7800 XT and 7700 XT, in terms of shaders, they're actually pretty close to each other. The 7800 XT has 60 compute units, whereas the 7700 XT has 54 compute units. However, the 7700 XT does come with a slower memory configuration and a slimmer memory bus along with a lower power limit. For the 7600 XT, I can see Navi 32 getting cut down further to 40 compute units. For memory configurations, this is all still up in the air, but I would say we're at the point now where even for mainstream GPUs, 12 gigabytes should be the minimum. I would not want to see this card come out with 8 gigabytes of VRAM, that's just too low and should only be reserved for bottom tier entry level cards like a hypothetical 7500 XT. Now with the gigabyte leak, 16 gigabytes is a possibility if they decide to keep the same memory configuration as the 7600, and while that's definitely better than 8GB, most of that will also be underutilized. By the time 16GB will be needed, the GPU itself will have already hit its limit. A 7600 XT with a 160-bit bus could also be a possibility. That would mean 10GB is on the table, similar to what we saw with the 6700 non-XT. In terms of performance, taking into account the specifications we just talked about, I presume a 7600 XT will likely fall around in RTX 4060 Ti. I think that is the spot AMD should target given the gap we have right now between the 7600 and the 7700 XT. 4060 Ti levels of performance isn't bad, I don't want people to misunderstand me when I said I didn't like the 4060 Ti. I feel like that you should be able to get that level of performance at a much cheaper price, especially in 2024. Taking into account recent pricing on Newegg for the 4060 Ti, 
uh, we can see here that there's been basically no movement. So if you want this level of performance, it's $400 or even more than that. And I think that's when things start to get out of reach for the vast majority of PC gamers in that mainstream segment. Given the way the market is currently constructed, I would say the most likely scenario will be AMD launching the 7600 XT at $350 based on recent pricing trends and their recent behavior in the market. Ideally, I would say 329 is where they can generate decent amount of hype in the segment but what I would really be enthralled about is if they had a price cut on the 7600 to save $240 or $230 and the 7600 XT was launched at $300 because like I said this level of performance really shouldn't be much more than that in 2024. At $350 it really doesn't move the needle, it barely does anything to their market share, only the AMD fanatics would be buying this card which is a niche crowd and the general masses will just stick with Nvidia and buy the 4060 Ti if they have no other option. At the end of the day it just comes down to price and I think AMD has another one of those golden opportunities to shake up the market if they're willing to do that. A segment which I felt has been neglected by both of the manufacturers that so desperately craves for a good value option. Alrighty guys, so that's going to do it for this one. We'll touch base in the next video. If you guys found this video to be informative and entertaining, then leave a like. Let me know your thoughts and comments down below. Be sure to check out the video description for cool links and ways to support the channel, such as using my Amazon affiliate link. And if you're interested in seeing more content like this, then consider subscribing, I'd greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching, take care and I'll see you in the next one.